Okay, this is activity 4.3 on changing water into steam. The aim of this activity is to find out the effects of heating and cooling on liquid and gas. Okay, this is the experimental setup. We have 200 milliliters or 200 cubic centimeters of tap water in a beaker on top of a burner and the starting temperature of the water at the start of the experiment is 30.5 degrees Celsius. And we shall see what happens to the temperature as the water is heated. I started my stopwatch as well. We can see some condensation, some droplets of condensation forming on the outside of the beaker. That, this is from the water vapor that is formed as the gas is burning below. This water vapor loses heat when it comes into contact with the cooler surface of the beaker and condenses into water droplets. Temperature is now 38 and increasing. The temperature is now 43 degrees Celsius. 45, 46, difference in the way the light passes through hot water and cold water. It's being refracted from the layers of hot water that are rising up and it gives that effect. It's a bit like a mirage. Let's look at the temperature now. It is 62.7 degrees. Water has been heated for 2 minutes and 47 seconds. You can see bubbles starting to form. Those bubbles are caused by gases that are dissolved in the water. As the temperature increases, okay, the amount of gas that can be dissolved in the water decreases. So the excess gas, the excess air, carbon dioxide that is in the water, it starts to come out as bubbles. So this, these bubbles here are bubbles of gases like oxygen, carbon dioxide and air. Okay, but the water is not yet boiling. Okay, let's look at the water now. You can see that um, bubbles are forming and coming up to the surface. The bubbles are forming on the bottom of the beaker and along the temperature sensor. Again, these are probably bubbles of dissolved gases that are coming out of solution as the temperature of the water increases. As water becomes hotter, it can contain less dissolved gases, so the excess, excess gases start to bubble out. I better move, better move away my book so it doesn't get wet. Okay, what's the temperature now? Temperature is now 100 degrees Celsius, 9900. Okay, the time is 6 minutes and 21 seconds, so it's taken about 6 minutes for the water, 200 milliliters or 200 
centimeters cube, 200 cubic centimeters of water to reach boiling point. And notice the temperature. The temperature is not increasing, it's staying at 100 degrees. Okay, if you look at the temperature, it's actually registering 100.5 degrees Celsius. The boiling point of pure water at normal atmospheric pressure is exactly 100 degrees Celsius. So this 0.5 degrees more than 100, that could indicate that the water is not absolutely pure. There could be some dissolved impurities in the water. Okay, the time now is 5 minutes since it started to boil and the temperature of the water is 101 degrees Celsius. The boiling point of pure water at normal atmospheric pressure is exactly 100 degrees Celsius. But this is tap water, so it contains some dissolved impurities like mineral salts, chemicals that are used in water purifying and so on. What could be happening is, as you boil the water, less and less of the liquid water is left behind because it is changing into steam and water vapor. So as less and less water is left behind, the amount, the concentration of dissolved salts increases and that will raise the boiling point. That's why it's gone from 100.5 degrees to 101. Okay, it's been five minutes since the water started boiling and the temperature is still 101 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling point of this sample of water. Let me try and increase the boiling point by adding salt. Let us see the effect if I add a spoonful of salt to the water. Okay, let's watch the temperature. You can see the salt dissolving at the bottom. As the salt dissolves, it should affect the boiling point. It's still 101. Let's add another teaspoon of salt. Okay, have you noticed that the temperature has increased to 102 degrees Celsius? That is the effect of adding two teaspoons of salt to this boiling water. It makes it boil at a higher temperature. Okay, the salt is completely dissolved. Let's add a third teaspoon of salt and see what effect that has. Okay, it will take some time for the salt to dissolve. Let's watch as the salt dissolves there. You can also see here what boiling looks like. When water evaporates, it only evaporates from the surface of the water. From the surface. That's why surface area will affect the rate of evaporation. But when water boils, bubbles appear throughout the water, not just at the surface. So the water is changing into gas, from liquid into gas, changing into steam throughout the volume of the water. Okay, the salt is more or less all dissolved. That's three tables, no, three teaspoons of salt. And the effect of that has been to raise the boiling point to 103 degrees Celsius. So you can see from this that adding impurities to water like salt can change the boiling point. Now it is even 103.5 degrees Celsius because of all the salt that I've added. Okay, notice also that the temperature is staying constant at 103.5 degrees Celsius. As more and more water boils away, it will the boiling point will probably increase as the salt becomes more concentrated in the remaining water because the salt does not evaporate. 
the salt does not boil away, only the water is boiling away. The three teaspoons of salt that I added are still in the water. So as you lose more and more water with the same amount of salt still in the beaker, it will become more and more salty. The concentration will increase and that will make the boiling point go up. Now I'm going to transfer my water, my hot water, into a conical flask so that it will be easier to show you the next part of the experiment. You can see when I pour the water into the conical flask, some of the steam, when water vapor is very hot, we call it steam, some of, some of the steam condenses on the cool inner surface of the glasses and you can see droplets of condensation. And you can also see in the beaker, it's quite hot, so the water has evaporated quite fast and it leaves behind a layer of salt. I'm going to turn on the fire again underneath my beaker of hot salty water, start it boiling again. Okay, the water seems to be boiling. Let's just test the temperature. Okay, I can feel the hot steam coming out, so I have to keep my hand away out of the stream of steam. It's very hot, this steam. The steam is, it can be hotter than 100 degrees. Okay. The water is boiling at 103.5 degrees Celsius because it's salt water. Okay, now it's 104 degrees Celsius. It's become more concentrated, as I predicted just now. As you boil it longer, the boiling point will increase because the water becomes more and more salty. Because you have less and less water with the same amount of salt. Anyway, for this part of the experiment, we're going to do this, this part of the experiment. I don't have a metal tray, but I'm going to hold up this, I've got a kettle, yeah, I've got a metal kettle here, and I'm going to put it into the stream of steam that's coming out, and you should be able to see water, water condensing, you see the condensation forming? You can see droplets of water forming. You can see all the droplets of water forming on the cold surface of this um, teapot, metal teapot. Well, it's not cold, it's at room temperature, but it is at a lower temperature than the hot steam that's coming out of the, the hot steam that's coming out of the boiling water. So the steam loses heat to the cooler surface of the metal flask because heat always travels from a higher temperature to a lower temperature object. So the heat from the steam is going into the flask, to the surface of the flask. The steam loses heat and it condenses into water droplets. Just to show you that there is water, I'm going to take this piece of paper and blot it on this. And you can see that it's so wet that it sticks. Okay, my paper has become wet. Let's just check the temperature of the boiling water again.
104.5. That's the temperature of the boiling water. Let's try and test the temperature of the steam. Okay, so I'm going to take the tip of the temperature sensor out of the water. I'm going to dry it and then I'm going to put it in the steam. Not in the, in the liquid water but in the steam. Okay, let's see what the temperature of the steam is. Okay, my, my temperature sensor in my, at the end of my thermometer is just above the water. I'm trying to measure the temperature of the steam and it seems that the temperature of the steam is 100.5 degrees Celsius. Okay, the temperature of the steam is 100.5 degrees Celsius and okay, now it's gone to 101. Hundred and one point five hundred and three. So the temperature of the steam is maybe one or two degrees less than the temperature of the boiling water and remember this is not pure water, I've added three teaspoons of salt and that's why it's boiling at above 100 degrees Celsius okay let me show you something interesting here I have a syringe with just a little bit of water in the end you see it's just normal water it's not boiling water, I'm going to cover the end of it with some blue tack to prevent the air from going in yeah, I want you to watch what happens as I pull out the plunger of the syringe. Okay, that should cause a vacuum, which I'm hoping will cause the water to start to boil. Okay, I can see bubbles. Can you see bubbles? This water is boiling. As I pull out the plunger, and you can also see condensation. Okay, as I let go, it becomes water again. Once again, I pull out the plunger, the water will start to boil because of the low pressure. Okay, a vacuum. You can see the water changing to gas. You can see condensation from the boiling. Now this is not at 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, this water is only slightly warm. It's about room temperature. Okay, again, water will start to boil. Okay. Now that is caused by the effect of pressure, air pressure, on the boiling point. So at low pressure, water boils at a much lower boiling point. Again, let's watch. See the bubbles forming and the condensation.